10 anglers, five competition days, two groups, yes, and one trophy. Come on! The YPC Bank UK 2023 is proudly brought to you by Predator Tackle and LMAB. Every great story starts with a cast. Hi guys and welcome to the seventh episode of this year's YPC Bank UK. Two anglers from Group A have already signed up for the grand final, but there are still two spots up for grabs. Today, we'll be showing you the first half of the crucial second day of fishing in Group B. At the moment, things are looking very promising for Western marketing manager Tom Hunt, one of the UK's top-rated predator anglers, who not only shone with his useful words of theoretical advice, but also as a great angler. So far, he is the only one who has a full card and can fully concentrate on improving and upgrading the smaller fish on his board. Right behind him, however, is the ginger fisherman, aka Chris Bartle. Chris has already caught a bunch of decent perch, bagged in 15 top water points as well, and above all, netted a massive 1.2 metre pike that should be hard to beat. Still, the man representing Fishing Law's Predator Tackle Store in Scotland is not done yet. He needs to fill the card with another pike before he can confidently start thinking about the final. In third lies Ash Costa from Gunky. With zen-like composure, the perch specialist has already caught two smaller and two really strong specimens of his favourite species. Building on this excellent start, he'll do everything he can today to catch two pike and perhaps a few important bonus points. George Lamb's strategy is presumably the inverted version of this. Our youngest participant, competing for headbanger laws, already has two good pike and maximum top water score to his credit and will most likely be targeting the missing perch to fill his card. Currently at the bottom of the table resides Tom Knight, who had an unfortunate first day of fishing. But that's the way fishing is sometimes. It's best if the VMC pro tells you himself what he's up to today. Welcome to YPC 2023, second day. I know I've got a lot of catching up to do. I had a pretty poor, poor performance on my first day trying to catch those perch. Didn't play ball and I really need those top water points. So today I've come on a lake where I practiced yesterday and I had eight, nine hits within two to three hours. So fingers crossed they're playing ball today and let's go and catch some fish. Good morning guys and welcome to another episode of YPC UK. Um, I am, so I've filled my card already, but I've got small fish on. My perch fishing, I'm just not confident. My practices have been really poor. And to be honest, I'm quite happy just to have like a couple of small ones on. I think my best chance is upgrading pike. I need some 80s. So the smallest I'm gonna put on is the 12 and a half bull tees today. I'm gonna to try some chatter baits, but I think I need to go big. I think 18 centimeters, 16 centimeter shad tees, 18 centimeter bull tees, that type of thing. I don't need many bites, but I do need some upgrades. So um, wish me luck. Let's see if we can get some. Uh, just got to try and work out where it is. I think it's, no, it's the next bit down. Might have to fight through the jungle a little bit here, finding those spots where no one else goes and like battling through the undergrowth is, uh, is a good part of finding fresh fish. No, no, it's not that one either, a bit further. So it's time to make the first cast. Um, yesterday in practice, I de-hooked the precision pencil in nine centimeters and it done really well. It was turning upside down a little bit, which meant that the black was showing on the top because there wasn't any weight on the hooks at the bottom. So what I've done is I've just colored the bottom in with a permanent marker black and we'll start, we'll start there and see how we get on. 
I'm ready. One Tom has his customised bait in the water, while the other Tom is still looking for the right spot to employ his go big or go home strategy. Another angler is just about to make his first cast. This thing's going to get annihilated today. Oop, bit some weed. Proper chopper style bait. Get one more cast from here, then we'll move. I'm just kind of speed fishing, and we're fishing a top water bait which has a very aggressive action. It's almost like a whopper plopper style, and it's kicking a lot of vibrations. The water is crystal clear. So, what we're doing is rushing between spots, just trying to get those two top water points knocked out that I need for those two bonus points, and hopefully fill the carb with another pike. Loads of roach, loads and loads and loads of roach. Uh, so welcome to day two of uh, YPC Bank UK for Group B. It's taken a little bit longer to get here today. We say we've lost an hour's fishing straight away. Uh, the game plan today is we need to fill the card, we say we need pike, um, but because it's still fairly early, we're gonna try to get them top water perch, but we're only gonna give it 20 minutes, half hour. If that doesn't work, we're just gonna go out and out for pike, see how that goes, and then maybe return to the top water later. Now then, and welcome to day two of filming for Group B. I am so excited just to get up and get started. I've got a couple of pike I need on that card. Well, I've got my two pike, but I'm really gonna try to get my two extra fish as the pike as well, because that's what I'm most focused on. And hopefully there's also gonna be a good bit of time to put into some perch fishing. That could be a real grind today, but I'm just hoping I can fill my card. Ah, okay. George is the last one still on the road and has slightly different plans than we expected. For Ash, the motto to begin the day with is bonus points first. So we've uh, just had a perch first cast on top water on a little popper, Hedora uh, popper. I don't think he's at legal size, but we're going to put him on the mat anyway, just to double check. So as you can see, I knew he was undersized, but we have to check just in case. So that fish was just undersized by a couple of centimetres, so that one doesn't count on the bonus points. But at least they're chasing top water, which is promising. Um, so we'll see, we only need a tiny, tiny bit bigger one, I think it's a bonus of 15 points, so. Promising indeed. Chris, meanwhile, is still looking for a first sign of life. Come on, where are you? Where are you? There's gotta be one round here somewhere, with all this weed coverage. Looks like a nice spot over there, done it for a top water take. Looks beautiful. I love the wider area, especially with all that shade as well. Pike won't be blinded by the sunlight as they come up. As long as the fish are there anyway. So that I can't even see any bait fish or anything here, so. There's no reason for there to be a pike in this spot. Well, it looks great. Right, I'm in two minds now, whether to keep going this way, where there's basically no big perch, but a good chance of pike, or go the other way where we've got a good chance of big perch and a chance of jack pike. A lot of the wind's come in and it's brought a lot of weed quite close in, and I'm really struggling to get my casts where I want them. So, I'm going to carry on moving around and see if we can pick some more up as we venture around to the other side. That is not a good sign. I was really hoping for a quick fish in this corner. It's a beautiful uh, reed lined bay. Um, I've just put a bull tease through and a chat bait through. Normally you get one like in the first few casts if they're here, but this bright sunshine, zero wind on the water. We could be in for a really tough day. Um, anyway, Let's keep going. I only need one or two bites. That's all I've got to tell myself all day. One or two bites. And every day fishing's a good day, so. Right, next spot. A good attitude to fishing. Still, the start here suggests we could be in for a tough day. The first strategical adjustments are made early on. I've changed tactics. It was on the surface bait, but round here it's really colored. I think there's been a boat come through. 
this morning and it's not very good for the top water. I'm not intending on really on fishing around here much, but in the coloured water, it did just so happen to make out a big shoal of bream. So I, I am confident there will be some decent sized pike around here. So I've just changed over to a subsurface bait. I'm just on a gliding bait now, big old glide bait called a gliding trout. And we're gonna see if we can get another pike out from around here before we go and try and get the top water point from elsewhere. But uh, we'll see how we get on. I'm relatively confident. So first cast of the day, we are at the canal on quite a big feature. So normally when I fish the canal, I like to cover a lot of ground, but today we don't have a great deal of time. So I am going to be spot hopping between the hot spots, big turn and circles, boats, features like that is really what I'm going to go for. Using the headbanger Spitfire today, not because I need the bonus points, but because I think it's really probably going to be my best chance at catching fish here today because the weed level just rises and rises and this time of year it's probably a little too shallow here to use anything else but at the other spots we will mix things up a bit. So just come around a little bit further, a little bit more open. It's quite less, less weed just under the surface here so I should be all right with uh, using the, the pencil. I'm just going to fan cast. I'm probably going to spend quite a bit of time here because it's a little, little tiny bit clearer than the rest of the lake and then We'll keep on plodding on, keep on progressing, keep on going round, trying to get them to, to start biting. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Only a lot of jack bike. Oh, <laughs> missed it again. <laughs> it's only like a 70 centimetre fish. It's not going to have that again. Well, I knew there'd be one here anyway. Slacking me off both times. Just didn't quite get the hooks. But it was only a small fish, so we want to get bigger ones than that. That was probably a 70. Couple of cool strikes though. I knew they'd be here because the bream were here. If the bream were there, you know the pike are going to be there. So even though that fish didn't come for top water with a cuss of water so murky. So changing tactics, changing baits. Right guys, for you at home, what should we do? I've got a full card, but they're smaller fish, so. I definitely need to upgrade, but I'm thinking, do I swap to perch now? Doesn't look like the pike fishing. I thought I was gonna get one this morning, but it doesn't look very likely now. So what would you do? Change to a river? Change to, stick it in the comments below. Um, change venues, change species. I'm a bit of a loss. I'm gonna, a little bit more pike fishing, then I think I'm gonna make a change. Yes! Oh, just about to give up. All right, keep him out of the weed. Come on, come to daddy, come to daddy. Come to daddy, come to daddy. Oh. Yes! That is called hard work and persistence. That's definitely an upgrade, should be a 70 something. I was just about to say this is the last spot we're gonna try. <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, mangled it. Sparkling blue, shad tea slim. 70, touching. 78. Confirmed. Give me some of that, brother. Yes, guys, come on. Cool stuff, happy with that. And suddenly there it is, the first sizable fish of the day. Tom gets a nice improvement and takes the lead. For his Shad T Slim, however, it's game over. Well, if you're only gonna get one fish out of a lure, when it's in a tournament, that makes me happy. Where there's one, there's another one. Oh, 
That was a good size pike. That's a really good size pike. And I spooked it. I wasn't looking. That's like an 80 centimeter fish. They won't come back for that now. Damn it. <laughs> I should have been looking. I was too busy thinking about all those barble on the surface around there. <laughs> It was a good sized park there. There we go. There you go. First fish. Just a tiny little perch, nowhere near the 22 centimetre mark, but we'll carry on. Uh, so we've just had the first legal topwater fish. He's very small, but he's very welcome. We have got a bit of luck because the fish are sort of out of casting range. They're under a bridge in the shade. So we're able to use the wind to take the bow of the line under the bridge. And that's when we're starting to retrieve. And that's when this one took it. So if we get a bit of luck, we might be able to get another two quick fish and then we can um, leave the topwater fish in and just go out and out for pike because we have got a field card. It doesn't look like much but it could end up being very important. George could also do with one of these. There we go. Just another little perch. We're still very, very, very far away from that 22 centimetre minimum size. Lovely little thing there. We're not just going to be blind casting for the perch, we're actually going to be looking out for him. I'll see if we can get a pike on the top water. But they might not be here. They move around quite a lot. The pike love moving around in the canal. There we go. Oh, there's a pike. Turned away. Got a feeling this is going to be... Oh, there we go. Ooh, missed it. That was a good size, that was a decent length pike as well. It wasn't very fat, but it was a long, skinny one. It's gone straight back over to the bush. Come on, take it again. You missed. There we go. Got it. We got it. We're hooked up. We're hooked up. There we go. Come on, we need to land this one. We need that bonus point. And it's not a bad size one either, really. Yeah, it's a long, skinny fish. Oh, there's two, another pike just followed it in. Oh, another pike's followed it in. Oh, a bigger one. But them at the same time, does that one count as well? <laughs> Come on. He's still following it, the other pike is. He's putting up such a good fight. Oh, a big perch followed it in. That perch is a 40 plus all day long. Oh, the other pike just came up and swiped it. The other pike's still underneath it. And the big perch is underneath it. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know why the, the perch is coming in for a look. It's being dogged by that second pike. Come on. That's how professionals do it. Yes. Get in. Get him up quickly because I don't want to get them hooks caught up in the net when he freshes around. There we go, straight out. Top water bait. Lovely pike. I'll sit him down there. That is a bonus 15 points. And we'll see what it goes on the mat. <laughs> there we go. So that is 79 and a half centimetres, which makes it 80 centimetres on the top water, top water point, and filled the card with an 80 centimetre beauty. Let's quickly take one last look at this one and we'll let her go because it is a bit warm today. Don't want to keep her out for very long. There we have it. Beautiful pike, long skinny. That's how I want him. Great for the competition. Let's slip this one back. Did you see how he turned the reel of his mouth? 95 points for the lead and a huge step towards the final for Chris. At least for now, the top of the table seems out of reach of the others. However, 
Second place is easily within Ash's grasp, but perhaps he should switch to Pike soon. Right, so what I'm doing, I've just tied back on the uh, Hedora popper, and um, even if we don't catch any like legal size fish here, there, it is good fun, look, you'll see what I mean. Look, you're just coming along the edge of that weed, and you see that straight away, look, the perch are on it. There we go, look. Probably not legal for the top water point, but still, it's great fun. This is what those poppers are really good for. When you have got weeded areas like this, because it's got the cup face, it seems to push the weed out of the way. So, yeah, it's pretty good fun. It, we'll try to catch another three or four of these, and if they're not getting any bigger, then we'll, we'll either move spot or we'll have a few chucks for the pike. But he's definitely not 22 centimetres, so there's no point even putting him uh, on the mat. But um, it just shows you, though, how effective it can be. And if there is a big old perch down there, normally this sort of approach does the trick. We was just using the smaller one here, but we are going to switch over to the bigger one. It will create more of a gap in the weed. We only need to get lucky twice on top water today. So it's looking promising, but we can't waste too much time doing this because we really do need to get those pike to fill the card. But this is such a fun way of catching fish. It's actually here. Alter, sind die krass aus. Ich hab's dir doch gesagt. Ja gut, dann lass uns los. Die Leute brauchen das Zeug. To avoid damages on your drunk baits, keep them strictly away from water. So you can probably tell by the disappointment in my voice that um, my plan isn't quite going as well as what I thought it would. Practice session yesterday really got my hopes up and I haven't even had a touch um, on the top water. So scratching my head, trying to work out what it is that might trigger them. I do think it's the sun and it needs to warm up a little bit. In the practice session yesterday, they were taking around about 11 to one o'clock. I was hoping they'd take a little bit earlier, but they haven't. So all I can do now is just keep on hammering the water and try and get my top water. There is no point in me progressing onto my other spots unless I get these top water fish. So let's get going. Let's go and try and find some more. A few of them big dragonflies are coming out now and they're starting to like lay their eggs on the top of the weed and stuff. So that's a promising sign. It's heating up and hopefully the pike turn on in the next hour. Otherwise I, just, I haven't got a chance at all. I'm, I'm fluking it as it is, try, uh, trying to catch up with the people that are in front of me. Um, so if, if it's any longer, uh, I haven't got a chance in hell. Oh man, I feel sorry for Tom. But for most of the others, things haven't gone according to plan today either. So unfortunately the first spot didn't quite produce anything other than a couple of small perch. So we're just gonna jump in the car now and drive to another spot. There's gonna be a lot of driving in between spots today. Um, the fish just clearly weren't feeding there. We saw loads of roach, some big ones as well, maybe that big, and there were just no sort of no signs of any predators feeding at all. So hopefully the next spot.
Right, so just had another top water fish, but this one's going to be tight. I don't think it's, no, he's undersized. Yeah, just, that's annoying. So it's going to hopefully just repeat exactly what I've done there, which is aggressive movement of the rod, but little retrieving of the line, if that makes sense. So what you're trying to create is loads of disturbance in one, in one area rather than a lure that they've got to chase all the way in because what's been happening is we're sort of running out of room because of all this weed we've only got a short window to hook them before they've sort of come in under the weed and then your chance is gone really really don't want to waste this amount of time chasing the top water fish really want to be going for the pike but while we've got this opportunity we can't really ignore it we just need two more ash really has no time to lose tom on the other hand apparently has a little to spare obsessed so, yeah. by balls <laughs> Potty. Are you going to drop? What's that one called? This is Dylan. Oh, Dylan. And that's Delilah. Ah, nice. Yeah. Are you going to pitch? <laughs> These public waters are, are pretty cool. I really like, you know, chatting to dog walkers and uh, bird watchers and just anyone really. It's nice to meet people that enjoy the outdoors. So, um, right got a feeling about this spot. So what I'm doing now is I'm just swapping over from the Spitfire to the Headbanger Shad. A really small one though and a roachy sort of pattern. I'm doing this because there's so much vegetation here it's just all getting caught up on the surface. It's an absolute nightmare to fish really but uh, hopefully something like this I'll be able to jig it up and down in and amongst all the weeds. Just had a bite for sure on my first cast with this. First pike I've seen all day. This shad has got a rattle in it as well, which hopefully is gonna be an extra little bit of attraction that's really gonna help me in this coloured water. And there's a boat coming. So we are in a race against time. I was trying to judge where it went. I don't want to risk casting on its head and scaring it, but it definitely swam towards the back and to the right. So we'll give a cast just off to the right. Make sure polarised glasses on, because that's gonna be crucial to watch this pike following the bait, and if it does, it might not bother having it because it was obviously spooked after watching his friend get netted, but it's worth a couple of casts anyway. There's a really nice pike there. I think it's bigger. Not interested. Didn't even look. It must be that same fish that we've just seen chasing the other pike. Time to implement twitch, twitch, boom, which is what we're calling this. Like I said, it doesn't work every time, but it does work. When it does work, it can save you from blanking. Oh, I'm gonna go for them perch. Oh, he's turning, he's turning. It can take a little while. You can be stood there for like 10, 15 minutes sometimes. We haven't really got that kind of time, but it normally works when the fish are, are on it, but not quite taking the bait. That fish never even followed it to begin with, so it was always gonna be a bit hit and miss. It tends to work better on the river, if I'm honest. I'll also have a few casts with this bait and really rip it through and just see if I can get a reaction and take off the other, other pike that was here. Three pack that was in this spot. See these Sedora poppers, they just think they're a cracking, they're a cracking bait. There we go, pull it comes off. Right, here we go, he's in. Right, so moment of truth. Right, so he's legal, look, he's 23 and a half, so he's 24, so he's another legal top water fish. You would not believe how hard it's been over these two days to try to catch fish even at this, this size on top water baits. It's been so difficult. So uh, that fish is really welcome. So I'm just gonna slip him back now and we'll see, we just need one more and then we can spend all afternoon chasing the pike. Ash's plan is working, but considering how reserved the pike are acting today, his confidence is remarkable to say the least. Anyhow, we'll see. Meanwhile, George has started working in the shadows. Will this bridge finally deliver? Fish on. Oh, oh no. There you go. It's a nice 50 centimetres, that. Really thought I had one on then. Ha <laughs> ha. 
I do, at last. Oh, there we go. Now I think that's probably gonna be very, very borderline on the minimum size. Maybe slightly below. So we are coming in at 40, five centimeters short. That's frustrating considering it's taken a while to catch him. But there's plenty of time left in the day for a bigger one. Could have really done with another couple of inches there. You're right, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the lake that um, I was practicing on yesterday and I had all them hits on hasn't yeah. hasn't produced. I'm just thinking now because it's getting quite late and I've I've got an hour plus drive if I'm to get on the river. Whether I should just ditch it and get on the river or just keep on plugging it out from my top water. I mean, you might end up risking a little bit too much by going there and not getting anything at all. It's a tough decision to make because I'm not having any fish on here, but I think he's right. I need to stick it out on this water until I get my top water before I even move on. There's still a little bit more time left and anything can happen, I suppose, still, but I just need that fish to just get me, just get me pumped again. So I'm just feeling a, bit, a little bit low at the minute. Oh, he's looking at it. Oh, oh the bait went into the wheel, right in the weed. But they normally have confidence in numbers. When you see them on their own like that, they're really funny. I don't think I'll get that one. If I had a little top water popper or something, then I, I probably would have had to go for that. <laughs> on top water, little tiny popper. Damn it. If I'd have had a jerk bait on then, maybe I would have tempted him. I have got some in my bag if I need to. But he was up and active high in the water. I'm looking for the fish that are laid on the bottom motionless just to drop a bait down in front of him and just very gently try and finesse him out of the weed. But we'll come across more perch like that, guaranteed, they'll be around this corner, normally on this bend. If we're about three or four, they're gonna go, they're gonna have top water, they will. Oh, they just turned away. Three perch, just like I said, three big perch. Okay, I thought they were gonna go for that because they were literally on the surface, almost basking. I wonder what kind of polarised glasses Chris is wearing, but even the best vision only helps so much with the lethargic predators today. We're approaching lunchtime. Can anyone here improve their situation before the half-time whistle? That was a struggle. <laughs> that actually might be an upgrade on the uh, the perch we've got on the card, actually. So this one is definitely legal, and it might even be an upgrade on the perch that we've already got. So I was trying to really carefully unhook him. He really wanted that popper. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute, but we'll get the perch um, on the mat and we'll get him put back in. Right, so we've got him, he's legal, and he's 29.5. So he will, he will count as a 30 centimetre perch in the competition. See there, just going over the uh, half a centimetre mark, nose right up against there. So he's tw just over 29.5, so with competition rules, it'll get rounded up to 30. So not only is the final top water fish we needed, he also is a five centimetre upgrade. So that's a double bonus. So um, what we'll do now, we'll slip him back. I'm gonna have one more cast on that popper just to see if we can upgrade him again because there was some others a little, little bit bigger. And then we can just forget about the perch and then really go after the pike. We really need two pike, but we have got quite a long time left. So fingers crossed we can get some. Ash is as calm as ever and picks up another nice upgrade. He's still missing the pike, 
but with full top water score and two free spots on the board, he actually now is in a much better position than Tom Hunt. In the meantime, the other Tom's fishing nightmare continues. There's a pike sitting right down there on the ledge under the scum. So I'm just going to try and creep out and flick a top water. Loads of little tiny, tiny, tiny bait fish down here. I'm just going to try and disturb him. Hopefully he spins and goes out there and then I might be in with the chance of catching him, but in here, the way he's positioned, looking at a wall, no way. I'm just moving him with my rod. That pike's about eight pound and he's just, I've just had my rod in his mouth. So that tells me that they're just not interested at all at the minute in anything. They're just, they're just chilling. They're just resting under the weed, not active whatsoever. So it's just confirmed for me that I know it's a risk, but it's just confirmed for me that I'm just going to have to ditch this lake um, and go onto the weir on the, on the seven and just hope that oxygenated water um, produces me a top water pike or two. Maybe a bit of a drive, so come on. Oh. Another one just went down and just, I think it just grabbed the tentacles of the bait though. I don't think it actually took the hawk. It was close though. And that was another 40 centimetre fish. I think it was the same one that took it the first time, looking at the, the group of them. It's a really bizarre way of fishing. You're just casting onto the clear patches and dragging it into the weed. And that's when they're going for it. There we go, smallest one, smallest one. Oh, he just turned, oh, he's gone back for it. Oh, he turned away again. Oh, he went in two, three times. Went down to it, looked away. He went down to it, looked away. He just couldn't make his mind up. We've got a really nice stick pile here. If we can get him over to the stick pile, they'll have loads of confidence chasing it in that. Where Gunky really have excelled with the uh, with these poppers is all good poppers will have like a walk the dog style action as you're fishing them. So you can use them like I'm using now. Like pop, pause, pop, pause. Or if you fish it like that, you can see it will veer from left to right. So you've got the advantages of not only a popper, but a walk the dog style lure as well. And these Adora poppers are just, they are absolutely superb. They're built really well. The hooks are razor sharp. They cast a mile. And as you can see, they, they catch fish in open water or in the weed. So it's, it's such a versatile bait, this one. Probably my favorite popper that I've ever used that, especially in that color, because it looks so natural in the water. Probably going to snag up and lose a lure, but man, if I was a fish, that's where I'd be. Mead. Right, let's go. You see it? I think we're at the point where we've... Oh, bugger. I think we're at the point where we've, we've annoyed the perch a bit too much. I'm starting to lose hope on whether I'm actually going to be able to catch one. They're still there, but the being really weird. The one that took the bait is flaring its gills because obviously it must have felt the hook. Do I change bait? Bear with me guys. <laughs> yeah so what we're going to do now we're just going to move down river a little bit. It's so weedy here. We'll, it'd be great if we wanted to just fill up with perch but we've done that now. Priority now is to get two pike. Um, my target before all this even started was 450 points. So we need two pike of 60 centimetre or bigger. And then I've done what I've set out to do. If it's not good enough to reach the final, then I'll give it my best shot. And um, whoever does go through, absolute massive congratulations to them. But that's, that's the plan. It is, as you can see, the weed is just horrendous. So we may have to uh, switch over to chatterbaits, but we will give these scunners a go and uh, the drag spins, because they look so good in the water. If we do get um, a fairly clean section, I'm sure if there's pike there, we'll, they'll hit them. So we'll, uh, that's the plan anyway, and see if we can uh, put it into action. Okay, well that's it for the end of this episode. It has not gone as well as I'd have hoped it to, to be honest. Um, we've caught fish, we've caught three fish, but none of them contribute to the overall score. Whoever made these minimum sizes up needs to have a long hard look at themselves because I'm not happy about that perch one. But um, yeah, there's a couple more swims to try for the day. A couple more areas of canal, should I say, that I do have high hopes for. So anything can happen just yet. So it's, uh, it's time to roll the dice. Middle of the day, I've left that place. I've had one upgrade pike. 
and now we're going to try somewhere that I've never been before. So um, it's going to be a bit of a gamble, but we're going to go perch fishing. So I'll see you in the next episode. Right, so we're at the end of the first half of the session. Um, it's starting to get pretty warm now. We've only managed one 80 centimetre pack on top water, which is really, really cool. It obviously gets me the bonus top water fish and gets me a full card now with 80 centimetre pack. Um, I think in the next episode, you're going to see me probably target the canal a little bit more, go a bit further, try and get the last top water fish we need, uh, maybe try and upgrade. And then I think we'd probably end up going to the river or something like that for the last hour of that session. But for now, it is getting pretty hot. So catch you in the next episode, guys. All right, folks, that's it for today. It cannot be denied that that was a really tough day for everyone so far. Chris needs perhaps one more upgrade to make it safely to the final. Tom, on the other hand, probably needs a bit more since Ash is hot on his heels and would come out on top with just two small or one bigger pike. George's plan hasn't worked out well at all so far, but he doesn't seem to have given up yet. Tom, on the other hand, is finding it difficult to remain confident after a disappointing morning on a spot that had worked so well in practice. But just as there are fishing debacles, there are also fishing miracles. Which one you'll get to see here, you'll find out next Sunday at 6pm. Until then, have fun on the water, leave a like, a comment and please subscribe to this channel. Cheers and ciao.